But tomorrow, in the first West Country derby of the season, they play Bristol Rovers, and they're aiming to disrupt Swindon's measured approach. Nine, ten, eleven... Despite the importance of tomorrow's game, much of the talk at Rovers' training ground this morning was of another offer from Crystal Palace for striker Gareth Taylor. The revised package is said to be worth a total of £1.7 million. But today, director Jeff Dunford said Palace should make a serious offer or leave Rovers to get on with their season. It's distracting because all I want to do, I mean, here I am on you know, the eve of playing Swindon Town, I'm, I'm explaining it to yourself and everybody else, and I've had to do it on the telephone with other press people, and uh, we, we, have to, we have to answer those questions. I'd much rather be concentrating my thoughts, and I, and I think Gareth and Marcus would as well, on, on trying to beat Swindon Town. The main worry for Swindon manager Steve McMahon is whether striker Wayne Allison is fit after being injured on Wednesday. But he still has Steve Finney available. Finney, the find of the season, was only brought in as backup, but he's now scored five goals in seven league games. It's a fantastic start of the season. It's, uh, you, know, you can't beat it, really. Uh, top of the league, confidence is flowing. Um, the lads, well, you don't really feel like you're going to be beaten at all. You know, and I think it's going to come as a, as a shock if we do get beaten. The Derby is an all-ticket match, so no tickets on sale tomorrow, but they are available from the Supporters Club offices in Kingswood until 8.30 tonight. Also tomorrow, Bristol City travel to Bradford. Um, on paper, Swindon have scored 14 goals and conceded three, I think, and Rovers have scored at a rate of just a goal a game just over. Um, so that says 2-1 to Swindon, yes, but I'm sure it will be different than that. Some may yet see the game as a meeting of princes and paupers. Rovers' sole summer signing was the free transfer of Mike Wyatt. By way of contrast, Swindon spent nearly £600,000 to bolster their squad. Meanwhile, Rovers have once again rejected a big money offer from Crystal Palace for Gareth Taylor. Everybody has their price. Um, I'm sure John Moore will want to keep him because um, on today's market prices, he, he must surely be worth £2 million. So where do you see the key areas in the sort of battle on Saturday then, Steve? Yes, I think, um, obviously, how Sean Taylor, Seagraves and Culverhouse contain Gareth Taylor and uh, Marcus Stewart will be intriguing. I think Rovers will definitely need to get some width on the right or left wing, and it wouldn't surprise me to see John Ward put Sterling or even Archer in a very advanced position, because to undo Swindon's sweeper system, you've got to get wide and get crosses in the box. Over 100 goals for the two West Country sides is testimony to White's own accuracy in front of goal, and it could well be his successors who decide tomorrow's encounter. Will Schindler, HTV News. <laughs> Rugby's showdown is at the recreation ground. In midweek, Lee Archer returns in place of Mike Wyatt. Rovers skipper Andy Tilson is on the bench after missing the last five games with an ankle injury. Gareth Taylor is again the talk of Twerton Park this week. First Division Crystal Palace have renewed their efforts to sign him, but Rovers boss John Ward desperately wants to keep him at the club. Swindon also make one change from the lineup, which took them back to the top of the table with a 4 1 win over Bradford. Former Bristol City striker Wayne Allison hasn't recovered from a hamstring strain, so Eddie Murray takes over in attack. Steve Finney is one of the new kids on the block for Swindon this season. Signed on a free transfer from Manchester City, he's been an instant hit with five goals already. Today's referee is Eddie Wollstoneholme from Blackburn, as is Swindon Town, who get us underway. Steve McMahon, the town player manager, pumps the ball forward early on, but no problem for Brian Parkin. Stewart and Horlock challenge. Horlock sends that one into orbit. Right eventually underneath it. But uh, easy for Culverhouse to tidy up at the back for Swindon. McMahon popping up on the right wing now. He's got Robinson on the burst outside him. He's come inside, trying to make room for the shooting chance. Horlock! Left foot drive by Kevin Horlock and Swindon Town have taken the lead. Five minutes gone and it's a dream start for the visitors and their fans are ecstatic behind that goal. Steve McMahon it was who popped up on the right wing. Rovers allowed him to cut inside. He eventually played the ball into Horlock's pass and his left foot drive nestled in the bottom corner. Horlock's second goal in a matter of days and Swindon Town are in front. It's 
the uh, signal for Mark Seagraves and Sean Taylor, again coming up from the back for Swindon. Player manager Steve McMahon and Paul Bowden supervising operations at this kick. Imagine Taylor could well be a target. McMahon curls one in towards Taylor, gets a flick on and just wide of the post. Well, it was Taylor against Taylor there because Gareth Taylor was doing the marking, but it was his namesake, Sean Taylor, who got the touch for Swindon. And it was only just wide of the mark. Pritchard arrives just ahead of Finney. Now Clark for Rovers in towards Taylor. Stewart looking to pick up the pieces as so often in that combination and spreads a lovely ball wide for Andy Gurney. Right foot shot from Gurney, side netting. Well, one or two uh, supporters in the crowd thought that was in. And a lovely strike from Andy Gurney. And Frank Talia relieved to see it pass just the other side of a post. to Skinner. First time effort from the Rovers midfielder. Just wide of the mark. A good try from Justin Skinner. <laughs> McMahon again orchestrating things for Swindon. Spreads a lovely ball out to this near side to Bowden. Far post cross. Morlock's in there. The flag was up for offside. It was a fine save by Brian Parkin. In fact, play has continued. Well, the linesman definitely put his flag up there. Brian Parkin certainly didn't know it. And important that he made the save. Rovers can start again with Pritchard. Skinner. Good break from the back by Browning. Taylor was in there, but he used a hand on the way. And the celebrations cut short before they got into full swing. And Gareth Taylor there, just a touch of the Diego Maradonas really as he went round his man. A nice finish, but uh, obviously foul play in the build-up. Gurney swings in the cross, Taylor battling away for it. Breaks for Pritchard. In deep towards the far post, Skinner back, headed by Taylor, Miller! Delight for the Rovers fans and Paul Miller, his third goal of the season, and what a precious one that could be. Mistake early on by Ian Culverhouse, might fall for Taylor. Oh, Culverhouse atoned well. Fine at saving tackle in the end by the Swindon defender. Pritchard, harried by O'Sullivan. Just get the ball down the line for Miller. And Miller again. Neat one, two, comes to Browning. Good effort. Just rising above the angle of post and bar from Marcus Browning, but a fine strike. Clark away for Rovers. Archer, difficult ball to control for him. And he's run into problems there against Kevin Horlock. He's conceded the free kick. Steve McMahon once again at the centre of things for Swindon at this free kick. Horlock also there. Might fancy his chances from this kind of distance. Although it must be a good 30, 35 yards out. Perhaps Swindon would be better advised to chip it into the danger area rather than have a pot at goal. McMahon looks as though he'll do that. Aim towards Sean Taylor. And Sean Taylor's head is in the back of the net. But a push on the way. And the goal will not count. Relief then for Brian Parkin. It's a well-worked free kick. Taylor came in on the far post, but just pushed his man out of the way to get there. And the goal disallowed.
looks as though he's given the goal. Extraordinary scenes here at Twerton. It was McMahon's free kick. Taylor planted the header into the corner. There were suggestions that there was a foul. Certainly the linesman thought so. But eventually, referee Eddie Wollstoneholm has given the goal. McMahon finds O'Sullivan. Finney bursting clear down the right. Swindon on the counter here. He's got Horlock making tracks in the middle. Finney up against Gurney. Gets the ball in there, and it's back in the net. And it's Kevin Horlock. And Swindon Town a 3-1 up. And Twerton Park is silenced. Superb counter-attacking play by Swindon. The fans are delighted. And they've every reason to be. No doubts about that goal. A fine cross in the end from Finney. Horlock arrived at speed, and he buried the header past Brian Parkin. Pritchard just looking for a bit more movement. Eventually hoists one in towards Gareth Taylor. Frank Talley has missed it, away by Seagraves. Swindon escape, at least for the moment. Here comes Skinner to Taylor. Finally, Talia hacks it clear. Well, there was a moment there when Gareth Taylor and Frank Talia challenged for it. Keeper made a bit of a hash of it, and he was grateful that Mark Seagraves was behind him to clear. O'Sullivan's first time ball, searching out Finney. Billy Clark with work to do here for Rovers, and Clark's lost out. Finney, good save by Parkin. And alarm bells were ringing again for Rovers there. It's a lightning counter. Finney beat right, but couldn't beat Parkin. Bowden finds Finney. And a little flick on there might come for Kevin Horlock. Kevin Horlock's in for his hat-trick here for Swindon Town. It's 4-1 to the visitors, and it's turning into a rout. Another real mix-up in the Rovers' defence. A little ricochet, like everything else this afternoon, broke kindly for Swindon. And Horlock had the simple task of tapping it into an empty net. Swindon, 4-1 ahead. Archer floats it in. Swindon get it away. And referee Eddie Wollstoneholm, a key figure in this match, brings it to a close. Swindon Town maintain their 100% away start to the season. A hat-trick by Kevin Horlock. The main reason behind their 4-1 win here at Twerton Park. Sean Taylor there, the Swindon number six, whose controversial second goal really changed the course of this game. After that, you have to say Swindon well worth their win. They stay top of the table. Rovers one, Swindon four. Okay, well, Mr. Wilson, there did seem a certain amount of confusion over that second Swindon goal today. Can you just explain what the decision was and why? I think if you look at the video camera, you will see it was a perfectly good goal. For some unknown reason, I blew and signalled the goal, and the player shouted to me, which, fair enough, he said. Free kick, your linesman. And then I don't know if my linesman flagged. I went to Costa clarifying when he hadn't. And the bad part from my point of view was it was amateurish because I shouldn't have blown. I should have just signalled. Um, I thought it was a good goal at the time anyway. Um, I think the confusion was that the ref's blown his whistle and pointed to the centre circle instead of just pointing to the centre circle, um, which perhaps confused their players and the supporters. But it was a good goal, as you could tell. And what pleased you most about the three of yours? I think it was the third way, knowing that it sunk in that I scored actually. And obviously, it's the first time I've done it. And, Probably won't ever do it again, um, but it's, it's nice. Um, probably won't sink in till perhaps tomorrow, Monday, but more importantly, I'm glad that we got the three points. Well, Mark, Swindon go marching on, but the game did produce a real oddity. What did you make of it? Well, at least I think first and foremost should say that the referee was brave to actually come on and, and say exactly what he did. And I think everybody thought in the ground that it was a push by Taylor on Taylor. The referee decided that it wasn't, but... If he had just pointed to the centre circle, Will, instead of actually blowing his whistle, has he pointed out? I mean, I think Taylor, the, the defender, has got to be far, far stronger because we know how strong um, the Swindon centre-back is anyway. The referee was in a great spot to see it because he was only 15 yards away. He did give a goal, 
But the fact that he'd, he'd whistles instead of just pointing, and then of course he thought, well, I'll make sure and go to the linesman. I think everybody, just by body language, thought it was actually a free kick, but at least he did make that decision. But it did change the course of the game, you see. To his credit, it was very honest about the mistake. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's nice to see because we see in the Premiership, don't we, that you know that re the referees won't even look at the video themselves, they won't be interviewed. For so, so for someone to come out and say and explain, I think it's quite refreshing, actually, yeah, but I don't think Rovers fans will be particularly pleased with his explanation, but... That's it right. was a turning point, but of course Kevin Horlock had got the first goal just five minutes into the game. And this really was a quality goal, and you know it doesn't. Ex it hits the, the back of the net very, very low. Good play by McMahon, but I tell you what, for a goalkeeper, that's the worst to have to try and save. It comes through a forest of legs, and it's so, so close to the ground, and it's struck with power, and it's really, really difficult. The goalkeeper, bear in mind, has got to get down. He's got to get down onto the floor and settle himself. And by the time Parkin had it, was in the back of the net, and that was just the start swing and wanted. Many people who've been to the game have told me the game much closer than the 4 1, the four -one yeah. scoreline suggests. Paul Miller levelling things, and at half time it looked pretty tight. Well, yeah, and I, and I think um, you know, the, the ball eventually gets played in from the right. It really just helped him. I think it's Taylor again with the header at the far post, and again it's blocked off Stewart. And Miller was a man on the spot. Now, Swindon won't be happy conceding that because they have at least six or seven bodies in there. And, you know, when you, when you look at it, and it's like one certain free header, that comes off Taylor again. And Miller, look how much time and space Miller's got. He's in the middle of the six-yard box, so it was a poor goal for Swindon to concede. But there's no doubt whose day it was, Kevin Horlock. No, it was, and I think it was refreshing. Certainly, uh, you know, his, uh, his second goal um, of the lot was great because Swindon, there they are in their own box, having to defend, and comes to McMahon, how influential he's been in the, in the start of the season. On to O'Sullivan, super ball to Finney, was peeling away from his marker. And it looked at this moment as though it stuttered a bit, but it got itself under control. It's a great cross by Finney. And, you know, the thing about that, well, Horlock must have run 70, 80 yards to get in there. And that, you know, when you look at the way they play, they've got McMahon sat in there and they've got um, O'Sullivan and Horlock doing all the running for them. And they look a class act at the moment.